Hey, this is Lisar with UX in Motion, and I'm gonna show you how to parent icons in After Effects. Okay, so what is this about? Why are we parenting icons? What does that even mean? I couldn't think of a good title for this one, so but it's a cool, it's a cool thing. You're trust me, you're gonna to want to watch this one. This is great. So let's check it out real quick. So what we have here is this animation that I built where you're using a, uh, a mask, but you're actually using a track mat, not a mask. And I'll show you what that means. And we're basically doing some parenting and some cool stuff. It's just a cool thing to know how to do. So we're gonna do it. So let's look at it real quick. This is a really simple one. You can see there's not a lot of, um, it's just the same repeating keyframes, just changing the, uh, the uh, position. That's really it. I am gonna show you how to create like a little spacer interval piece of footage in After Effects so you can build out your intervals really quickly. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So um, uh, let's get started. So, oh, and make sure you click and, click the link and download the free source file so you can follow along. So you should have a folder here on your desktop and it's got your assets and it's got the Illustrator file and it's got the After Effects file. So you can open that up and just jam and we'll do it together, my friend. Okay, so I'm just gonna close this out. I hit Command O to uh, just kind of create a new, a new canvas here, and then uh, Command I. So I'm just going to import our asset here. There's multiple ways to import. Uh, I'll show you a different way now, which is that if you have your asset here, uh, you can just click and drag it right in After Effects, uh, composition, layer size. That's what we want. Um, there's also you can double click in here. You can hit Command I. You can go File Imports. I gave you four ways. How cool is that? Before we even started. All right, I'm gonna double click how to parent an icon in After Effects. Let's jump over into Illustrator to have a look, just see what we're dealing with here. Looks a little messy, so I'll just show you one at a time. So the background layer, this layer one, is just, it's just a background layer. I should have called it BG, sorry. I always do. This is just all the assets that are just baked in, no motion, you don't need to like separate it out. I've got a little circle thing. We are gonna be moving that, obviously. Uh, the icons are just on a strip and that's it. And I'll show you how to create a, a shape layer. We have a mask here, which is just a reference. I could have created that in After Effects, but I like to do as much prep work in my design tool as possible. So that's it, that's what we're dealing with. So let's, let's start building this puppy out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to just set up this mask with the track map. Now, this is pretty easy to do if you've set up your file the right way, which is why I like to show you how I set up my files because uh, that'll save you a freaking lot of time, my friend, if you just prep your files the right way. If you don't, you're gonna spend you know, 90% of your time just trying to navigate your layers in After Effects. Like After Effects is a beast. You don't wanna be figuring stuff out. You don't wanna be thinking. You just wanna be mechan like building as much mechanically as you possibly can, trust me. Okay, so we have this cool mask layer here. Um, what I'm gonna do is, if you hit this toggle switches modes button down here, you get this track mat column. A track mat is another way of doing a mask, except the mask isn't linked up to the layer. It's its own layer that you're mask using to mask another layer. It may not make a freaking bit of sense, but let me show you what it looks like. So the way it works is I take my icons layer here, which are these icons here, and I'm just gonna say track mat. I'm gonna say alpha mat. And now what it's doing, it's just using this area here as a mat. And what it does is it does two things. It turns off this mask layer, and it also creates this little icons down here. I don't know if you can see that. That says, hey, there's a track mat going on. Just something to be aware of. Now, with this icon layer, I'm gonna reposition this because I the way I built it up, I, I wanna start with this icon at the bottom. So I can just click and drag this area here. And if I hold down shift, it'll actually click and drag pretty fast. And then if I take my finger off shift, and then hit command, it'll slow it down, which is a cool, cool freaking tip. So that's about where I want it. Now, the thing that I did also is that I actually liked to make a little background layer there and I didn't make it in Illustrator. I was a bad boy. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna duplicate this layer and just put it in the background and change the color real quick. So the way you do that, this is really easy, really cool, is you select the layer you wanna use. So in this case, I'm gonna hit command D I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna put it below the icons layer here, and I'm gonna change the color. So I'm gonna turn it on now, and I can see I actually put my icons in the wrong spot. So I can now go back and hold down Command and just reposition this so that's you know in a happy place. 
That's a happy place. Okay, cool. Now let's change this color and drop the opacity. So the fastest way to do that is if you just control click, go layer styles, color overlay. Love it. And it'll just default to that awesome Adobe Red that we love so much to hate on. And I'm just gonna make it like a dark gray or black, call that close enough for government work. And I'm just gonna hit T for opacity. I'm gonna drop this down to like, you know, like 20% just to have a little visual call out in the design. I usually don't like to design in After Effects, but sometimes I'm like, eh, it'll just help. So we have that set up now. Now the next thing we're gonna do, so we have this built, right? It's built, but it's not animated. We've rigged it up. Now we're gonna rig all of this up. So I'm gonna select these top three layers here, mask icons, mask two, and I'm just gonna click this parent, this pick whip tool here where it says parent and link. I'm just gonna parent that to this circle layer so that as the circle layer moves left, right, the whole clump that we just rigged will also move with it and I don't need to use extra keyframes because when you're prototyping UI animation, I want you thinking in terms of like iterations and just cranking through lots and lots of versioning of stuff. So this is the fastest way to use the fewest keyframes. So I'm just gonna click and drag any one of these because they're all selected and now they'll all say circle, you know, layer four, circle, circle, circle. So now, if I click circle and I hit P for position and I slide this left and um, up down, it'll move. That's not what we're gonna do. Left, right, the whole thing moves together, which is sweet. Okay, so let's just animate this. So yeah, I'm just gonna double check you're working at 60 frames a second. If you hit command K, boom, you can change your uh, frame rate right here. I like to start on frame 34, uh, just to give folks, a, you know, just a half second beat before the motion starts happening. Don't put your motion on the first frame or I'll yell at you. Um, but it's okay, I don't, I'm very, i kindly yell. I'm not like a big yeller, just a little bit. Okay, so the idea is here is we're gonna have it move over and stop, move over and stop, move over and stop, and that's pretty much it. So we'll just build a couple of these and make it happen. So I'm gonna first hit the command, the, the P start position keyframe. I don't really do that in real life, I'm just doing it here, but I hit option P and that creates a position keyframe. Now I'm just gonna scoot it over 34 frames. So from the keyboard, I'm gonna hit Command Shift right arrow, one, two, three. Uh, so that's 10, that's 30 frames, and then one, two, three, four. That's a nice little interval to work in. It's like, like a little more than half a second beat. And I'm just gonna, so now at this point, you can do one of three things. From the keyboard, you can just use Shift arrows and just literally just drag that whole thing over. You can also just click and drag here, or, if there's no keyframe, you can just literally click, copy, paste, and it'll make a keyframe. Whatever it is you're happy with, I'm just gonna do this right now and get that nice and centered over here. So now we've just moved this over one, which is super cool. And we're gonna do the vertical movement now. So with the icons layer, I'm gonna hit Command P, hit K to jump one keyframe over to the right and I'm just gonna move this down and I'm gonna uh, use click and drag with the space bar. That's a nice little tool here. Get this nice and centered in my composition here. Okay, great. So that looks pretty tasty to my eye. So now I'm just gonna close my work area, grab these four keyframes. I use the flow plugin to assign easing. The After Effects easing thing that's built in just is a train wreck, totally blows, but there's a cool plugin called Flow, which is amazing. It'll change your life. I don't get paid a dollar from those guys. Um, so I'm gonna click that, and then I'm gonna hit space bar, and we're just gonna have a look. And I'm like, you know what? It just feels really fast, because we wanna show, it's not a transition, it's actually an interaction we're showing. So I'm gonna just gonna click and drag these out, because I want it to feel a little bit more like somebody's using this thing. That feels a little bit better. And the other thing too is you'll notice with this easing velocity curve, I, I was just using uh, one of these ones right here. Let's see here, we can bring this back up here. So I was using quart out. Now for a transition, you want no in, meaning you don't want it to slowly ease in because it feels unresponsive. You want like a hard end. Because we're actually showing a user interacting with something, I'm gonna use quart with the ease in and the ease out. So I'm gonna make sure all my keyframes are selected and I'm just gonna get hit apply, I'm gonna try that again. Uh, use the work area, please. Don't know why it doesn't wanna do that. Okay, so now it feels a little bit more akin to 
like a user has, you know, they're sort of tentative, they start and then they stop. So again, we're not going for perfection here, but it is conveying something through the motions, conveying user intent and all this stuff. So I like this interval right here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make a spacer in After Effects. So you can quickly chunk this out. So if you hit Command Y, you can make a new solid. It's just a shape. Don't need to overthink it. It just has a color and a name and that's it. So I'm gonna say, okay, it has this beautiful Adobe Red. I'm just gonna turn it off because I don't even wanna see it. it. Makes me angry. So now I'm gonna trim this down. So I'm gonna put my playback head over my first keyframe and hit Command Left Bracket and hit K. Command right bracket, sorry, not command, option left bracket, option right bracket. It'll trim that puppy down. Now I can have this visual reference and I can know where to drop my keyframes, which is crazy helpful. So now I'm going to just build a little space in here before we, um, and figure out what the space, what the timing is that I wanna get right. So I'm gonna copy these, paste these, copy these, paste these, and hit N over here. And now we're just gonna, build this out to another location. So actually what I meant to do, let's not do that. That was the wrong strategy. Okay, what I meant to do was to take this keyframe, copy paste it, take this keyframe, copy paste it. We're just creating a little hold here where nothing happens. Now I have my little layer right here that is sort of the exact distance that I want to be here. I'm gonna hit O on the keyboard because that goes to the out point of this selected layer. Now I can go back here and I'm just gonna slide this over. I always forget which one's left, right. So I'm just gonna reposition this here and make sure it's nice and centered. That looks pretty good to me. Okay, and now we're gonna do this one here. So I'll just move this and we're gonna go down another one to this one, beautiful. Okay, so now, so basically what I'm doing is I've now created another one jumping over the next interval here. And I'm gonna reapply these keyframes, uh, the easing here, because I've noticed when you just change stuff, it just gets weird sometimes. So I'm just gonna play this through. Okay, so that's our first movement, hold. That hold feels a little long to me, and that's what I wanted to know. So that's kind of why I built it this way, so we could f figure out exactly what that whole distance is. So we can make a little spacer for that. Even that feels like we can tighten it up just a little bit more. Okay, that feels nice. Now I'm just gonna duplicate this layer. So I'm gonna select red, so I'll call this like long spacer. And I'm gonna hit command D to duplicate that. I'm gonna call you short spacer. And I'm just gonna make it fit to here. So another great keyboard shortcut is with that layer selected, if you hit left bracket, it'll snap the in point of that layer over to where your playback head is. I'm gonna hit K on the keyboard to go to the next keyframe and then hit option right bracket to just trim that layer down. So now I have a short spacer and a long spacer. So now I can just hit shift and drag and it'll snap it over to here. I didn't quite do that, that's hilarious. Um, but now I can use that as a reference in what we've just created here. So we can see that I've built this out and there's a short spacer. So now I'm just gonna make, I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna go click this, hit O, and I'm gonna go back here because now I've got my playback head lined up. I can paste that and I'm gonna copy and paste that. So now I've built in a little pause interval. Now it's purely mechanical and I can just drag this over here and I'm gonna copy and we're gonna go to the out point of this one and we're gonna just gonna drag it one more time. That'll complete the motion for us. So I'm just gonna select this layer, zoom in a little bit so I can get this nice and lined up and we're just gonna drag it over. I'm just using the keyboard at this point. Um, something like that. And I'm just gonna click and drag using the space bar. And we know that this one is going to do this here. Get that approximately centered up. Okay, so I'm pleased with that, and I'm gonna hit N for the out point over here. And just to be safe, because I'm always paranoid, I'll just select all the keyframes again, because flow is so freaking awesome, I'm gonna hit apply, and we're just gonna hit shift question mark. And a great technique, a great tip, is if you hover and hit tilde, it goes full screen, and then wherever I hovered will go full screen. And now we can just preview our work, and we're like, hey, not bad, not too shabby. And so that's what we've built. Um, 
right now. So that's a cool animation. So I hope you got some value from that. We covered a few interesting things using a spacer in After Effects to build out the interval timing, uh, a lot of copying and pasting keyframes, using flow, using track mats, building a shape, using layer styles, all good stuff. If you haven't already, make sure you click the link, download the source file, and then you can go back and have all the assets and review and do all that good stuff you need to do. Thank you for watching. I had fun this one. And don't forget to hit subscribe uh, so you can get more of these videos. And if you're on my email list, I'll be uh, sending these videos to you via email. Thanks. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later.